Hi everyone, this is Dee of CBD Daily. In this video, I interview a fellow freelancer, Paolo Fortich. He talks about his work ethics and how he stays focused and how he finds jobs. We get into very specific tips on finding work online. And whether you're a new freelancer or a seasoned freelancer, there is something in this video for you. Paolo has a tremendous, tremendous perseverance and he's a risk taker. So if you need to uh, pick me up for whatever reason, more motivation or specific tips to help you land clients, there is something in this video for everyone. So this was a fun, fun video to shoot. So it will also be a treat for you to watch. And without further ado, let's begin. This is D again. Don't forget to subscribe and hit like, smash the like button as Peter McKinnon would say. And I upload regularly um, content to help people find jobs online. And let's start. So hi, Paolo. Um, and hello, uh, viewers. I would like to introduce Paolo. He was one of the very few people who actually asked me to get on a call when I started, maybe two weeks after I started making content, um, helping freelancers find online work. And I was very glad to say that I said yes. And what I thought was a 10 minute phone call turned into a two hour phone call. So we're going to divide this um, video into to two videos. In the first video, Paolo is going to talk about a story which involves perseverance. And in the next video, he will talk about his work, which is very interesting. It's very advanced. I learned a lot from him. And I'm sure a lot of you beginner and um, long longtime freelancers as well can also learn from him. So those will be the two parts. So um, without further ado, I'll first let Paolo introduce himself and what he does. Um, so yeah, I'm Paolo. Uh, most people call me Pao. Um, so I'm a consultant. Um, Told you he was fancy. I'm sorry? <laughs> You're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I call myself a consultant because uh, I do a bunch of stuff for different clients. Um, so I've done a lot of things um, or work online. So I've been through Upwork. Um, I've been working with clients uh, directly through referrals. Uh, so all the clients that I've had, I think they're, most of them are referrals, except for Upwork, where I had to apply. Uh, but the clients that I work with right now, they are all uh, referrals. So um, if people ask me, like, hey, what do you do? So my response is I do a bunch of stuff. I call myself as a digital Swiss army knife. Uh, so Please anything that you need, yeah, it, um, anything you need to find um, in terms of building a team, uh, running a team, creating processes uh, to you know, operate the team remotely. Yes. Um, that's my forte. Um, I discovered it by, I think by accident. Um, so I want to provide some context to, uh, how you started watching and listening. Yeah. And uh, how I started. So, um, I used to work in the, in a call center. Um, oh, okay. I work, yeah. I only worked with one call center for nine years and then, um, that's right. Got, that's right. Yeah. You were not in the online freelancing space. Not yet, and, and not in the in the. I wasn't actively thinking of looking for an online job. Like I, I felt that it was something that's good to have, but I didn't know how to start. So my first foray into remote work or online freelancing, uh, it wasn't through Upwork. Um, I saw a friend's post uh, that uh, her company, the company that she works with. Uh, just got a hundred million dollars of funding. Wow! So I got excited. I felt like mm, that's a lot of money for a yes. company, for a startup company. Um, and then I felt like maybe I'm gonna check out <laughs> what she's posting. Maybe they're hiring. And then surprisingly, they were hiring for an operations manager. Which you and were doing for the BPO industry, if I remember correctly. Yes. So I was. Uh, so I started in the BPO as a yeah from from um, how would I say entry level, 
And then nine, it's nine years, of course. Yes. <laughs> I was able to <laughs> work my way up. So I was an operations manager back then. And then I have, um, so the role was for an operations manager, but the, the, it's going to be the same function. Right. But uh, it's going to be remote. So it was like, I was, I was lucky. So yeah. So, you know, to cut the long story short, um, I jumped from uh, an office based job or in the call center, I jumped into remote work. Right. Um, Welcome laterally. to the club. Yeah. And I felt that was it. I felt like, hey, um, I'm one of the lucky persons where I didn't yes. have to go through um, to, you know, to do something different. Um, and a lot of applications from... on Upwork. Yes. But um, we'll get to then... what he had to go through later. Yes. So I was working with a, with a U.S.-based uh, company. Um, and then our remote team, uh, we had, in my team alone, um, I had 350 people at our peak who were all working remote. Right. Um, and then um, we had a BPO partner who had 150 people. So I'd say remotely I was managing 500 people. It did not feel like like everyone's remote. It was just like we're in the computers. We were uh, mostly working on. Right. Um, uh, that's a lot of people, text. though. That's a lot of people, but um, I felt like I'm used to it because in the BPO, like you manage hundreds of people, so it was like that felt like natural. Yeah. Uh, and now, mm -hmm. um, let's fast forward to what happened after contract ended. Correct. That's correct. And then what happened? And this is the story. It, this is our part one, and later we'll go back to his actual work. And the skills he has so we can all learn from paolo as well so it was a two-year contract it was um stated on the offer letter that i uh, that i got and with the right. contract that i signed uh with that company right um and i wasn't i wasn't extended so i wasn't uh prepared uh that i'm going to be looking for, for work <laughs> For work yes uh, to be like most that, of us and start actually applying that's right so i was caught off guard um, and, uh, let me just cut you there you were making um roughly six figures each month correct that's correct yes. okay yeah this i, <laughs> yeah. I bring that up because this will matter listen carefully all right especially uh, newcomers who are telling me it's hard to find a job now and i don't blame you i know it's covid more people are applying online but paulo's story will inspire you okay paulo so um it was six figures um and when i was in the bpo it was just four figures and i i did not realize that i could make that much right um and then then i didn't know how to negotiate as well so let me just you know um share some backstory there um, so my asking rate was like um, not close to the six figures that they that they offered. Um, I didn't have the negotiation skills back then, uh, but I was just lucky. Like the 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 general manager saw the potential in me, and he felt like okay, I'm going to offer this guy this much. Um, so t I worked f for them for two years. Like I lived a good life. Like six figures, man. Like that's yes. uh, that's a lot of money. And let me just get um, you there really quick. You will hear Paula say that he will call himself lucky, but there's luck involved a little bit, but more of it is this guy's work ethic. So ignore him when he says he got lucky. He has really <laughs> good work ethics. So, okay, so you were comfortable and then? Yes, I was comfortable and I kind of felt like um, this is it. This is, I think I've made it in life. There was a point that I felt that way. Yes. Working from home, so I, six I, figures, of course. Yes, right? Um, traveling here and there. Yes. Um, and then it's working from home and the schedule is flexible as well. Wow, nice. And from someone, yeah, and from someone who, was, uh, who came from the call center, yeah. uh, my shift was usually uh, mostly graveyard? early morning. Okay. Um, I dreaded the graveyard and I was lucky as well. I also used lucky because I was, I was in the BPO. I think... It, it was f for straight five years. 
I was in the 4 a.m. shift. So I lost my job. Uh, wasn't renew. Uh, they didn't renew the contract, and I found myself jobless. What was going through your mind during this time? I kind of felt like no way I'm going back to uh, an office job. You uh, love the uh, working remote lifestyle. Yeah. I, yes. And Can't then blame you. There's the pride as well in me. I kind of felt like uh, I don't want to prove. I don't want people to say like. Uh, yeah, he uh, let go of his stable uh, BPO oh. job to go remote, and now you know, right. he doesn't have a job anymore. That's why he's going back. Right. I entertained the idea of going back uh, to work at the previous company that I worked with, uh, okay. the call center. Right, because you were uh, with them was, for a long time. Yes, and then I did not burn bridges. <laughs> Good. I, did, I, I Good. ensured that while I was I worked remote. I wasn't poaching people from them. I don't. I don't, I don't want yes. to hurt. Yeah. yeah. It's, yes. I just, I, Good call. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to burn bridges. I kind of felt like okay, they could be my safety net. But there was. I had pride in me, and I. I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to, people to say like, hey, he made a mistake and he's back. Yeah. Uh, so. What did you do I, next? Tell them. I, I did the best that I can uh, to find uh, remote work. So, I went to Upwork. Uh, I was trying to find uh, jobs for me there. Right. I also went to LinkedIn to look for um, remote jobs. And where... tell them about the spreadsheets. Ah, yeah. Uh, so the spreadsheet. So I made it. So in the, the first few days that I didn't have a job, um, I was down. I kind of felt like for the first time in more than... 10 years. It's my first time not doing anything and I did not have a plan for the day. Um, Were the, the bills mounting that... as well? The bills were mounting too um, but um, prior to the contract uh, ended uh, my wife and I made a conscious decision that we need to have a buffer fund and then uh, back then I think we had something like uh, we had money that's good enough to last us three to six months. Okay, it's always a good idea. Without getting desperate, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's why I was taking my time. Yeah, I, I thought I was taking my time, but I was desperate because I was on Upwork. I tried to up, uh, apply for jobs, and then tell them how many those. jobs, how many ah. applications you sent out. So I sent out um, more than fifty on Upwork. So, uh, so That's fifty on Upwork. on Upwork. Yeah, and then I still have the spreadsheet uh, for companies that um, I found on LinkedIn, LinkedIn and Flex Jobs. And Flex Jobs, um, okay. Yeah, so I paid for, I think it's ten dollars for Flex Jobs or fifteen dollars okay. per month. So a total so, of how many applications? More than 100. More than 100. Okay, that's More what I wanted 100. them to hear. We're talking yes. about a guy who had a very cushy, high-level um, position, very comfortable work, and he was flying to the United States, and the contract ended, and he sent 100 applications. Okay, 100 applications. But that's not the end of it. Um, proceed, Paula. What happened after the 100, which you tracked in a spreadsheet? I remember you telling me. Yes, I, so I, I was tracking in a spreadsheet, and then, yeah, notable was, and I did not know that and know it too. So I applied for Twitter. So they were like nice. uh, building an office in the Philippines around 2016. Okay. Um, they flew me to Manila, and I can share now that they did that because like I signed a, an NDA, but it was for a year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that was like five years ago. So I didn't get the job. I kind of felt desperate already. Like, okay, it's been like two weeks and nothing's happening and at this um, point it was like the 80th or the 50th or was it the 100th point, it was the i think yeah it was the 100th more wow. than 100 already so it's, I, I, I was at the end of my rope yes. in terms of patience you had to send like, videos right when you were applying for the, for the job you weren't just like copying and pasting and like being lazy about it so 
Yes, so I I tried to I I tried to innovate. Uh, I wanted to differentiate myself. Um, like my fr my frustration was when I was applying through Upwork. Um, I did not get to to I did not I did not get through any of the interview stage, and I kind of felt like what am I doing wrong? <laughs> um, and what I did. And it was easier back then, but I don't, I'm not sure now. It's difficult to uh, to be an employer. So I wanted to yeah. understand, okay, what does an employer uh, see on his end when he posts a job? So I posted a job. Okay, that's, uh, that's very yeah. smart. Uh, I posted a job. And Out then of the like, box, I to, listen. I, I tried to uh, test and see, like, okay, what, what do employers see? And then that's when I learned that when you post a job and it was like a data entry because okay. like I, I felt like that was the those were the jobs that had like um more than 50 applications all of the time right right oh so you were aiming then, for yes for one that would get a lot of applicants yeah so that i okay. would just see like quickly so that i would have a quick turnaround time where and i would be able to see and understand okay what happens yes. what's the process yeah um, like well, that's how the... deep this guy would go to look for work. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I think I was just really desperate. I I I wanted to understand the game. Um, and that's so not a bad thing. Hour, being desperate. Not a bad thing. And uh, acting not, not, on it. And that's what costs you to be innovative. Instead of you know people, some people get desperate, and then they give up. But not you. I can't. <laughs> good. I have a family to feed, so I just can't. Yes. Um, so. A good why. Um, what I learned from Upwork, so when I created, and I think you can do that now. Uh, but when I was, uh, when I created a job, like in the first hour, there were 50 applications. And then like people were sending templates. And then people were just sending like, and I, I, I put myself, uh, myself on the um, hiring manager yeah, employer shoes. Yeah, but like, I know. What how that's am like. I going to get through fifty applications and then people writing very long uh, or very cover short letters, even, right? Or very short. Yes. Right. right? And then. Yes. Um, I felt like okay. I think if I, I if I try to, um, I, I I felt like I now know why because the the cover letter that I send. It's very long. Uh -huh. it's not, uh, it doesn't fit exactly fit what the what the uh, the employer or client was uh, is looking for. Looking for yes, and I covered yes. this in my article on cover letters. I'll link it down below. And um, it's very smart of you. I learned the hard way. <laughs> I said 100. <laughs> after a hundred. After a hundred. Uh, so uh, yeah. But at um, least you were trying to hack it. You, you see, guys, yeah. he was trying to, okay, it's not working. Maybe at the 50th, it would have been also nice to, okay, I'm doing something wrong. But still, you went, you were thinking outside the box. You put yourself in the shoes of the employer to see what it was like, which is very creative. And I love that. It, and you didn't give it up. It took me too long. It took me too long to figure that out. Better late than never. And when I figured that out, like, okay, I think I now know what to do next. Okay. So I, I now understand what I, uh, what I did wrong. How long was it? Uh, your cover letter. So the, the the cover letter. I mean, before I knew uh, how to write the correct cover letter, it was like three paragraphs, and I was okay. like to. Okay, that's yeah, not bad. Like, Unless um, each paragraph had like eight. Each paragraph ten. had five five sentences. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Still so not like, too bad. Very detailed with like. Okay. I used to be an operations manager. This and that, this and that. Even if it did not suit, uh, it's not a requirement. It right. Didn't have any value? With right. What, For the uh, particular. So I, that's right. Yes. So I just wanted yes. to uh, pad it so that I sound good, I look good, and yes. maybe, um, I would have the advan advantage among uh, the other applicants. But it does not work that yes, way. Yes, that's correct. Um, and I covered that in the. Um, how to make a cover letter and my sample cover letter. I'll link it all down mm -hmm. below. And now you so, don't have to go through what Paula learned. <laughs> We're going to yeah. give you the actual <laughs> skeleton so, for free. <laughs> um, 
the cover letters I, 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 I wrote after that was like, hey, my name is Pao. Um, I'm really interested with uh, the uh, with the job with your sort of like your, your job post. Um, so quick background about myself. Um, so I'd say I've done this and that. Maybe three points uh, wherein I that related to the or parallel to what yes. they're looking for. Uh, maybe there are skills that's not really what they're looking for, but it may be relatable or there's something there are parallel skills that can be applied. Yeah. Um, so like my, my template was like, hey, found your job. I'm looking for um, more about me. Uh, I feel that I'm a, I'm, a, uh, I'm a good fit, but wanted to explore. I uh, don't want to waste your time uh, reading very long <laughs> cover yeah. letters. How yes. about you get on a quick call so that you can qualify me further? Sort of like that. And that and worked. Change that. It worked because like first, Beautiful. Um, I was sending a bunch of um, cover letters. It makes my life simpler because, like, I just have to write uh, short ones. Yeah. Even when I when I uh, send long cover letters, it's always personalized. I mean, it's not really a template where I just change. Like, yeah. Still, there's a, there's a core template there. Yeah. Uh, but I change a bit. But when I made it shorter, like, it's just really easy for me. And then one trick yes. that I learned. Because they're busy. Mm -hmm. Go yeah, on. Yeah, we're busy. Uh, one pro tip as well, so that I can uh, I can ensure that it's really short, and I think I haven't shared this with 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 anyone yet. <laughs> That's what I wanted people to really hear when you told me that story, Paolo, because I get messages all the time. It's hard, this and that. I know it's hard. I'm not saying it's not, but then I ask, how many applications did you send? I sent 20 already, and then I hear Paolo's story, and this guy, imagine, was making a lot of money. Um, had a high level position and he had the humility and the perseverance to send a hundred applications um noted on a spreadsheet <laughs> um yeah let me just i think i found the uh, and that's the, oh by the way that's 100 rejections too yeah so i that's what it takes we all get rejected i i remember applying on because I, I tell people that you should also apply on craigslist and most of them are like what you can do that yes you can um i found some good clients and also some shit clients i admit on craigslist but if you really want good clients i found a really 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 good client on craigslist los angeles but i had to send maybe 50 applications to get one client because the competition is very fierce so if you're sending 20 30 and you're feeling bad don't he had to send 100. I've had experiences where I would send 50 in one batch and 50 in another batch. That's what it takes. But once you land those great clients, I mean, right? It was worth right. it. So, so tell it's them now. It. Sorry. Let me share my screen real quick. I think Your spreadsheet. Yes. This was the spreadsheet. Screen. Okay, so you have company. You have position. Date applied. Date applied and still. And wow, you are detailed, yeah. man. Yeah, so this is just for the companies that I applied for through, um, not through Upwork, but through LinkedIn and FlexJobs. Okay, Jobs. so you had one yeah. for every platform. Yes, I couldn't find the one for Upwork anymore, but this was what I was using so that I would know where I am at. Like, there's I rejected, love this. rejected, rejected, yes. rejected, Yes, yes, I haven't updated. Um, I haven't updated, but like if you see the dates, like September 12th. Rejected is even better than ignored. I've gotten ignored a lot. <laughs> I think the blank ones are ignored. I <laughs> see. So. That's why yeah. I really wanted people to hear your story, Paolo, because that's what it takes. And it's not just with new newcomers. Even um, when you're caught at the right, wrong time, the wrong place, when you lose jo your job, at just the your timing is just bad. This is something we all have to do at some point as freelancers. That's right. And then, Paolo, so tell them that you have another story. So you were rejected 100 times. And then tell them about the job that you finally accepted just to accept the job. Yeah, so I was desperate <laughs> because like, I showed the spreadsheet. Uh, so I started September 12, applying it. September 12 to October 21. That's more than a month, right? Yes. Yes. So you so, got rejected uh, 100 times in a month. Yes. But you weren't giving up. No, you didn't even go back to your old employer. Yes, that's the spirit. I can clearly remember 
October 21. Um, so I got accepted for a job um, in the morning. The training would be at 4 p.m. Manila time because the trainer was from somewhere in Eastern Europe. Okay. Um, and then um, for me, I was desperate because like, wow, like I got rejected, ignored for like more than a month already. Yes. And then like I don't have income, but I know there's money uh, for uh, the next. So it was one month. So like we can live comfortably for the next two months. Mm-hmm. But I was desperate. Like anything that would uh, I- income to my bank account, I, that would be a welcome change for me. While this was while uh, we were going through this, um, I just want to ask: uh, When you were feeling really down, was there anything you did to motivate yourself aside from the fact that you have a family to feed? Was there anything you did to pick yourself up um, emotionally, mindset-wise? Yes, there was. Uh, so my motivation was like, I'm going to make this. I'm going to master Upwork. Um, so I'm going. My motivation like was: that. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out Upwork. And I'm going to match or multiply by a factor of two how much I was earning before. Wow. Okay. Like, good. You had a specific goal and an ambitious one. Very good. That was like, and then um, for me, I felt like there's no mm-hmm. way I'm going to get uh, a new job where I'm going to get uh, six figures. So I'm going to work my way up. So when I decided that, that was that was when I um, beautiful I I, um, October twenty first, mm-hmm. um, two thousand sixteen. Yeah, four years ago. That was when almost. Yes, <laughs> um, that's why I always celebrate October twenty first. October twenty first, we always my family and I would always travel. Or hopefully, COVID's uh, done by then. But yeah. um, I got apply uh, hired in the morning. Trainings in the it is at the four p.m. In the afternoon, um, so I joined the training. The, the The rate that they offered was three dollars per hour. Right. And then wow. for me, I felt like okay, that's that's okay. Um, I, that's better than zero. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, and I just love Paolo how you came from a this cushy job and you were s- still willing to take this a lot of people would be too proud they would take on work they don't like or they would go back to they would just give up and go back to working um non-remote and just give in but not you you were just still going for it and kudos that's why i really wanted them to hear your story and it impressed me and i'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to be watching this later on or even now and your story is very motivating and ju- that just goes to show how perseverance and humility will really l- let you win in the long run yeah but i, I had close calls too like no i was almost running out of patience um, you're human yeah I mean, I mean i'm human like there were times where i kind of felt like okay maybe uh that's the end of me i've heard of stories where in and i've met some people where in like early in life they were making good and then when they lost their job they like even until the twilight years of their lives they never got, got over it days. yeah yes yeah. and there's a saying that it's not the strongest that is that will survive it's the most adaptable and i believe that that's right i took a three dollar per hour job and it's not bad uh the only time i would feel bad about it was if i were trying to compare like a six-figure salary with versus like, what you were used to yeah yeah like, i was used to but i kind of felt like oh this is this is, i just have to start i just have yes to, exactly to you just myself, have to start right? that's what i love about your story is there's so many lessons in it you just have to start instead of complaining and giving up you just have to do something and it's not forever and then tell them what happened it's really funny with that three dollar an hour job I got fired <laughs> in the first hour <laughs> because, uh, so first which hour by the way will turn out to be a blessing right that's right because i, I got See? fired you never know um, uh, after my first hour because they were really strict with breaks um so i was late for like a few minutes but for you're them, in the barnyard like, yes 
mm-hmm. uh, and it was an indicator for them where like if you can that's for them that's their uh, that's their company culture right like, if you can follow schedule then you know, we can rely on you uh, right. if not then this is not because it was like it was easy for them to accept me uh, and th- because I used the the new way of uh, sending cover letters um, right so that's yeah that's straight how, to that's the point I asked for a phone call that, that's right so I remember um, that I kind of felt like she was a super junior I kind of felt like okay I, I'm a manager I used to be a manager I still feel like my manager and I can I, <laughs> I know this stuff and then the person who was hiring me I kind of felt like she 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 doesn't know what she's doing. No, I was proud. But to me, like, okay, I need a job. I need to do this. When she fired yeah. me, I felt like, okay, this is so humbling. I used yeah. to be the one. I'm used to be the one on the other side who fires people. Yes. <laughs> not who gets fired. And these experiences um, aren't necessarily bad. We learn so much from them. I've had a lot of humbling experience, and it, you, you turn into a person that you could be happier with than had the experience not happen, right? That's right. Um, and then I, I, when, I, when, when I got fired, I felt bad. But you know, I just pressed on. Yeah. yeah, I just pressed on because I have a bigger why. And my bigger why mm. was like, I'm going to figure out Upwork. I'm going to earn twice as much as, as what I was earning before. Um, and then... Uh, I told my wife like, "Hey." Um, and this is I, the part I, where it gets the uh, the tides turn. After the all your hard few... work, the one hundred rejections, getting fired, <laughs> then the magic happens. But also the because hap- of something that you prepared. Okay, go on. That's right. Um, because I was equipped already with like, you no, know, I, I always took notes of uh, the things I, I've learned ar- along the way. Even if it took me a hundred. Uh, application before I figured out uh, the the that hack with uh, with Upwork. I already have the knowledge of how to send a cover letter. So I I, I sent this. Uh, there, w- there was a requirement for um, a project manager for an Australian company. Okay. And it felt good for me. Like okay, it's going to be Australia. The time zone going to be not going to be crazy. So the requirement was to work at 5 a.m. Manila time and then okay. get off at uh, 2 p.m. Um, so I was, I was like excited about it. I, I I used the I used the the my new formula, uh, wherein like I think total it it's less than ten sentences for a cover letter. It's always I I'd always put there like oh le- wanted to get on a quick call. You can reach me through his yes, uh, cover letter I'm, tips. Ma- Listen up, quick yes. call. Yeah, quick call. All right, um, and then I would always put there so that you can evaluate me further if we nice. are a good fit nice right. i would always use if we are a good fit um i forgot why uh, how i figured out what the, i think I, I i read something somewhere on linkedin so that's why it's always good to read <laughs> yes it's um, always uh, amen so brother. i won't take credit for it that i figured it out I, I'm pretty sure I read it somewhere. and it's like Yeah, but you executed. Many people read, and I was guilty of this for a long time too. I would read and read, but I wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. The fact that you read it, then you did it. That already so, differentiates you from a lot of people. So that's when the, uh, you mentioned the magic happened when um, it was a blessing in disguise when I got fired from the 3RR job because that um, customer or the client offered me... Um, Eight dollars per hour, and I was asking for ten dollars for hour. And I like people hearing this might feel like the audacity of you asking for ten dollars per hour ten years, <laughs> years ago, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, but like I know I can charge that high because I've you no, know, I've been paid high. I kind of felt like yes. Okay, if, the, if, if if the if the company if one company is able to pay me that, maybe the others are still able to. So I, I yes, kind of felt like I needed because you were worth myself. it. Yes. I know I was worth it. And I yes. And you're, worth, you, you uh, had a ton more. of experience. Exactly. And that's another, this is why I really wanted to get this guy live. There's so many lessons in what he's saying. Charge what you're worth. That's right. Um, so he offered me $8 per hour. Right? What did you and say? Again, like, you no, know, people who would hear this, like, the audacity of you asking $8 <laughs> five yes. years ago. 2016. Um, yes. Um, but. He offered me, okay, I'll, I'll pay you uh, $8 per hour. And if I feel uh, that you're worth it, I'm going to make it 10 Okay. 
So, like, I was the first uh, project manager they hired. Uh, they have a bunch of uh, stuff going on in okay. their office, and no one was like, my title was like project manager, but didn't feel like a project manager. It's <laughs> like I was the all around guy. Right. Uh, oh, uh, just before I forget, I'm just going to cut you right there. You gave me a good idea. I think for negotiation, that could be something that works. If you ask for $10 and they say, we'll give you eight, say, okay, I'll take eight now. But if you think I'm worth it after two months, can we ne renegotiate and see if you think I'm worth $10? I think that's something we can do. Yes. And I can vividly remember that I have, back then, I had really poor negotiation skills. And Did I you was sharpen lucky it? Once again. You're lucky. I was yeah. lucky. Yeah, because like I, I said, like okay, I'm asking for ten. I said like I'm going to offer you ten dollars. Okay, I said okay, but he offered like if you do good, if I feel like you're worth ten dollars, I'll give it. I'll, I'll give you ten dollars per hour. Okay. Well, and imagine then what he did after the contract ended, what he was still willing to do, the humility, the perseverance. And, when, and super thank you, by the way, to Paulo, because when we were talking in private and he told me his story, I was like, dude, people have to hear this. And he was hesitant. He was hesitant at first, but when I really, I didn't even really have to pound it. We were just talking and I said, so many people are messaging me because of COVID, they lost their jobs or they wanna look for work online and they don't know how, and your story can really help them. He finally agreed. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that first segment. There will be the second segment coming this week. So make sure to subscribe, hit like, and stay tuned for that. In the next segment, we will also cover the top suggestions, tips that Paolo has for freelancers, both old and new. And all links mentioned in the video will be down below. And also I've included how you can get in touch with Paolo and myself down in the description. So it was, hey, say hi. Um, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye!